Well, welcome everyone. Uh, we're excited today. Um, have Sasha here. He's going to speak with us uh, from his experience as a technical recruiter and uh, just talk about careers and how to move into the professional field. Um, but before we do that, um, Mike again from the Next Generation IT Club. Can tell you a little bit about the uh, the club and what's some of the exciting things that are coming up for them. And then these guys head off today to yes. go up to uh, Bellingham for the Linux Fest. Hi, everybody. Who all here is going to Linux Festival? <laughs> all right. Good, good. Awesome. Uh, so, for those of you that don't know and are watching this video for the first time, my name is Michael McGinn. I am the president of the Next Generation IT Club at Cascadia Community College. And I'm proud to uh, uh, have a speaker here today and to sponsor the speaker series with Pizza and Networking. And uh, what the IT Club does is give students the opportunities to work on IT-related projects that they have a passion for. We provide a, a forum and, a, and an opportunity for them to uh, bring their projects uh, to reality. And uh, with that, we've done robotics projects, uh, server projects, game design projects, mobile application design projects, and yet to be determined What's next? It's up to you. So bring, bring, bring your project ideas to us and let us know. Uh, you can find us online at tngitc.com. That's the Next Generation IT Club. So thank you very much. And with that, I'll uh, turn it over to our speaker. And he can introduce himself and tell you what he's all about. Thank you very much. Well, uh, well good morning. Happy Friday. Thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Uh, very excited to be here. I uh, have an opportunity to come uh, you know, present in front of uh, a group that uh, will shortly be entering the workforce or uh, you know, advancing their careers, hopefully. So, uh, you know, I spent the last couple of weeks, <laughs> spent the last couple of weeks uh, kind of contemplating what I wanted to talk about uh, specifically, uh, you know, what was going to be relevant to my personal and professional experience. Uh, most importantly, what hopefully was going to be relevant to the audience, and uh, you know, what was going to be relevant to to our times, and uh, you know, ultimately, I think it can't be argued that uh, I think it'd be a case that we're living in the age of social networking. I mean, that uh, that's definitely the, the trend that we're seeing in the, the recruiting field. Um, you know, so I wanted to, to see if I could tie you know, basically tie those three those three topics together. So. Um, I'm definitely excited to spend the next 60 minutes you know, talking about some topics that we're definitely, uh, you know, I'm definitely passionate about, you know, including you know, overall employment, you know, the general recruiting process, uh, you know, and ultimately finding a job in the age, you know, in the age of, of social networking. So I guarantee you I'm not going to stand up here and talk for 60 minutes about LinkedIn, uh, you know, which is definitely, uh, you know, probably the most utilized recruiting tool out there in the world today. You know, every recruiter, you know, be it corporate, on the agency side, that is their de facto recruiting tool. You know, and the, the beauty of LinkedIn is that in one, you know, really in one space, you can have your cover letter, the equivalent of your resume, references, you know, or recommendations, all, you know, all in a nice, tidy package there for a recruiter or a hiring manager to, you know, to take a look at. Um, but I think you know the the other side. You know, I think LinkedIn is a tool. I think you know Facebook, Twitter, you know now even Pinterest are uh, you know are tools that recruiters are using, um, and that you know a candidate should be should be utilizing. If you're you know if you're in a position where you're looking for a job, really regardless of industry, you should have a LinkedIn account. You should take the time to uh, to build that account out. You know with the same level of detail. That you would have on a resume, you know. So uh, I think there's there's tools available. So I'd like to spend the first you know, the first half of, uh, of the talk here talking about kind of the tools, how we can utilize them. But I also don't want to lose sight of something that I think you know, with the advent of you know of job boards many years ago, you know, now the social media and social networking tools, you know, vendor management systems. You know, I think we've lost sight in some regards of the personal aspect of hiring. You know, as a recruiter, as a hiring manager, we're in the people business. Uh, you know, a resume is 
is, you know, is a piece of paper, you know, and uh, ultimately, you know, it's, it's all about personal relationships and networking. And that's, uh, you know, I think that's where I'd like to spend the second half of, uh, you know, of the meeting is really how can you leverage LinkedIn and, you know, and Twitter and Facebook, you, you know, some of these tools to get in front of the right people. That's you know that's ultimately you know that's ultimately what the goal is you know, to, to get in front of the right hiring manager to secure that interview, you know, and that's what we use all these tools ultimately for. So uh, I think there's definitely some strategies we can talk about to you know to help build out a network and to hopefully get in front of the right people because that's ultimately what you know what you're going to need to do. Roughly six, you know, I, I think it might be a little bit more than six out of ten. People who you know who secure a job do it through network. So you know it's it's a great idea to post your resume to, to Monster and Career Builder and to, to have your LinkedIn. But generally speaking, the majority of people are going to get a job through somebody they know or you know some sort of network you know network connection. So um, are there any questions initially you know, before before we get started? Um, you uh, First place we'd love would be our internal database. You know, uh, by far and away, people that you know, hopefully we know uh, that we've had some uh, some level of professional interaction with. Uh, so that's going to be the first place uh, that, that we go. After that, you know, we'll really be going out to our current base of consultants or employees or people that we're working with. You know, you know, this is this is the skill set we're looking for. By far and away, you know, as a recruiter or as a hiring manager. You know, we want to hire people that are referred to us by people that we trust. That's you know that is by far the you know the, the most effective way to to get in front of somebody or to get in front of the right people to get your resume in front of the right people is going to be through somebody you know. Say well how do you how do you do that you know when, uh, when you're, especially if you're just getting started in an industry you don't have a you know a network of 500 connections to uh, you know to to draw from how do you go about it? That's definitely where I like to spend kind of the second half. Uh, of our talk today is, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you network effectively and, and hopefully you know, leverage that network, network to find your next job. So, um, I know uh, Brian had touched on it briefly, so I've been in the industry for 12 years. Uh, I started with one of the large agency recruiting firms uh, right out of college. Well, not right out of college. I, uh, I did a 10-month stint at a dot-com during the dot-com uh, boom. 10 months later, uh, they were dot-bomb. <laughs> You know, and I was in the, the same position, you know, looking for my next looking for my next job as a 23 year old, you know, 23 year old recent graduate. So, um, had no idea if recruiting was an industry. That, you know, that uh, there were even such things as IT recruiters. Um, good example of networking. Ran into a buddy down at the gym, playing some basketball. You know, chit chatting. What are you doing? I'm looking for a job. Hey, I just started at this place. Uh, you know, they're an IT recruiting firm. Seems like they've got a good team. You should check it out. Went and interviewed, got the job. Ten years later, you know that's my that's been my career of choice. So I uh, started out as a technical recruiter, uh, did that for four years, then moved more into an account management uh, kind of external sales type role, uh, where we're interfacing more with our clients, uh, defining their requirements, what they were looking for, what their you know what their staffing plans were, and headcount forecasts, and all of that, and then you know communicating that back to our delivery team, to our recruiting team, to hopefully go out and find find the right people. So uh, I left that job uh, in January of 2011 uh, to take a contract uh, with the Microsoft Xbox team, uh, recruiting primarily electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, um, you know, people that were working on the Xbox products, both the console and the accessories. Um, it was a great experience. You know, after having spent the majority of my career on the agency side, uh, to get a you know a glimpse into, even if it was for a short period of time, into how a large corporation goes about hiring. Uh, you know, it, it was definitely a great experience. I left uh, left that contract, and that contract finished um, in October, uh, September of last year. I joined Summit Group uh, as their delivery manager in October. Um, we currently have four full-time uh, IT recruiters that sit in Kirkland, and we have a team down in Phoenix, Arizona, a one account manager uh, and a technical recruiter. We actually just hired our second recent ASU graduate uh, who's going to be starting with us uh, in about a month. So uh, another fantastic story of networking on how, uh, how this gentleman came to us. 
young guy, you know, still in college. He actually engaged us two years ago uh, through a, a contact that he had and you know, came in, had some informational meetings with us, met the team, did some shadowing, learned about the industry, stayed in touch. Two years later, the time comes and he's graduating, we had a spot vacant. So it's uh, you know very much another example of that personal networking, you know, and, uh, you know how it really you know, can have some great results. So um, I might start with a couple of questions uh, just to kind of get a get a gauge of, uh, of where everybody's at, um, and just for my knowledge, are, are the programs here? Are they all two-year programs? Uh, for year. Okay. So. No. No, they're certificate programs for a quarter. Oh, okay, fantastic. Well, thank you. Uh, well, I guess with that said, how many first year students do we have today? Right, so just, just a couple, okay. Um, how many of you are currently attending school in an effort to change your careers? Great, great, good for you, it's fantastic. Um, how many of you have a formal resume? Uh, how many of you have uh, a list of three to four professional or academic references? Uh, how many of you are actively engaged? And I think just by the fact that you're here, I think I know the answer to this one, but how many of you are actively engaged with your career services, or I don't know what the specific name is, but transition services, career services uh, team? I know I walk by the offices here, so I know that we've got them. So that kind of includes the internship or um, career services, Shelley, Rebecca? Yeah. Just, a, just a couple. Anybody participating in an internship currently? Great, good for you. Excellent. How many of you have a LinkedIn account? Great. How many of you checked that LinkedIn account? Okay. How <laughs> uh, about Facebook users? And lastly, Twitter. How many of you are Twitterers? Um, at this point, how many of you would say you have what you consider a professional mentor? Somebody in the industry that you really feel that you can call on with questions, with guidance, uh, to help you, you know, to help you further your career. Just a couple. Great. <clears throat> and lastly, um, how many of you are currently either Working or interning uh, in your in your current field of study. Excellent. Thank you, guys. That's uh, that's fantastic. Um, all right. Well, you know, we're going to uh, by the show of hands, and we're going to start at the beginning. Um, if you have intense intentions on finding a job, regardless of your discipline, you have to have a resume. Got to have a resume, and it's got to be. You know, it has to be a well put together, well thought out, well formatted resume. And you know, I, I encourage everybody to take the time to put it together. You know, really do a lot of soul searching on what's important to you, what your strengths are, and you know what you've been doing, and get that down on paper. Have somebody look over it. You have two, three people edit it, review it, give you feedback. Um, you know, your your, your faculty you know, can, can help. Career services could help uh, any recruiter uh, that you know, you know, on the agency or corporate side. And that's what we do for a living: is look at resumes all day long. So we can, can definitely help from a, uh, just a, a resume writing standpoint. The second thing, and right, you know, right on the heels of, uh, of the resume, you got to have references. You have to have references readily available that you know you've spoken with, determined that you know they know that they're going to be. You're going to be listing them as a reference verify contact information and have that all put together, you know, as a reference sheet. So resume references, those are the first, you know, by far and away the first, you know, the first two things that, uh, you know, that we need to get in order. Engage your career services team here. We're here for a reason and from my experience, it can be extremely helpful. You know, most colleges, if they 
they employ you know, career services team. That's what they're dedicated to. They are they're dying for people to be you know to be involved. That's what they do, and I encourage you get involved. You know the uh, you know hopefully career services will be able to help you navigate college hiring, and I think that's uh, I think there's an important distinction to be made, and one that I didn't I wasn't really aware of until working in the industry. But understanding how companies go about college hiring, it's very important. You know, if you look at uh, you know, most companies that are going to be classified as Fortune 500 you know, type companies, they've got a college recruiting model that they've got in place. So as a new graduate, as, you know, as, a, as a college grad, you're not going to be considered for every position that they've got over there. And generally, you know, in my experience, the way you know, the way most companies go about it. It's during their, you know, the beginning of the, their fiscal year. They're going through headcount. They're going through forecasting, planning. You know, how many people are we going to need to hire this year? Substantiating with their business plans, getting budgets approved, and all of that. At that point, generally, a college recruiting you know, liaison or a college recruiter um, will sit down with all the individual business owners, people that own these, you know, these headcount for these different teams, and determine, okay, you're going to be hiring just. 20 developers this year, just for that as an example. Of those 20 headcount, how many can you allocate for college hires? You know, that number is going to vary. You know, some some managers say, you know, this year I, I can't none. You know, some some managers you know may say you know five, ten, whatever that number is going to be. There will be a predefined number heading into their year of how many college hires they'll be able to make. Those college teams will be you know will be graded on on hitting those metrics. So. I think it's extremely important in your position to understand how you know how your target companies go about hiring college graduates. Most of them are going to have a ded dedicated college team. But that's all they do is attend college fairs, uh, you know, work on the internal side of defining what you know where they're going to be able to you know, make college hires, and uh, and ultimately interfacing with you know, with prospective applicants. So um, <clears throat> I think that's a very very important distinction. Made and every company goes about it differently. So. Um, is there a, a certain calendar time frame when that planning process happens for companies? It will. It will absolutely vary on the company. Uh, not every company, you know, uh, runs off the same fiscal year. Uh, you know, some some go off a calendar year where you, know, you can assume budgeting and planning is going on at the end of the year. They have the calendar year. Um, a lot of companies have an arbitrary, you know, year end date that may be the end of June. You know, so. It, Again, understanding what those you know what those timelines look like. Just a simple question: What's you know what's company X's uh, fiscal year look like? Oh, you know, it ends in June. So, you so know, it's at the end of the year when they would start doing this forecast. Yeah, correct. Yep. So at the end of one year, you know, at the end of uh, let's just say they're going they're based off of the calendar year, probably that November, December, probably more November, you know, October, November time frame, they're going to start entering into these conversations. For a company like Microsoft, where their fiscal year is at the end of June, you know those timelines are going to be adjusted. So it's uh, it's definitely adaptation to understand you know how companies approach college hiring, what their timelines, what their fiscal years look like, and get in touch with their college recruiters. You know, and that's uh, there may be uh, there may be a little bit of research that needs to go into that to, to identify who to reach out to. But by far and away, in your position, I would you know I would engage a college recruiter. As your you know if you've got a list of you know your top ten target companies that you'd ideally like to work for, and you know, we're going to get to this a little later, uh, hopefully. But you know go through and understand you know this is how Amazon approaches college hiring. This is how Microsoft does it. This is how Boeing does it. Whatever you know whatever companies you're looking at, and then make it a priority to find a contact within that college. Recruiter. Find a recruiter, get them your resume, you know, hopefully get in front of them and let them know what you're about, what you're looking to do, what your strengths are. Um, and then, you know, definitely have have uh, have somebody internally advocate for them. So um, I think that's definitely uh, definitely that's something of, of importance. Um, <clears throat> how many of you with your LinkedIn accounts have have over a hundred contacts? So that's you know that's definitely the other the other overwhelming uh, you know, advantage of LinkedIn is the amount of research that you can do through LinkedIn uh, and just the the ability to build out a network quickly. I mean we uh, as an example I mean we, we work in the recruiting field so this is what we do all day but we hired a new recruiter. 
recruiter that started with us, she had two, two contacts. Fast forward six months, she just emailed me and you know, she was pretty excited. She had her, her 500th contact you know, through LinkedIn. So that's uh, definitely, you can't get started too early. You know, we're building up that network. Say, well, you know, who do I network with? You know, I'm, not, uh, I'm not working in my field yet. You know, you've got classmates you know, that are definitely going to go on and, uh, and find great jobs. And you know, potentially two, three, five, seven years down the road, maybe a hiring manager, maybe in a director. Maybe you look at the higher you know, folks with your skill set. Start there. Your professors, your teachers, your career counselors, family, friends, you know, people that, that you feel may, you know, may be able to add value and that you may be able to add value back to, to professionally. Speakers. Speakers here. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, you know, if you're going to seminars, if you're going to workshops, if you have people coming in, absolutely when I track them down on LinkedIn and send them a network invitation. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed your presentation. I'd be honored to, to, to connect with you via LinkedIn. So that's you know around that. I'd set personal goals around you know around networking, and that's you know and again we know that that's going to be your most effective tool in finding finding your next job. So again, who do I network with? You know, it's been my experience that industry professionals, people working you know at the companies that you're going to be targeting, they want to help you. Want to help new graduates? They remember how tough it was, and uh, you know, they, it's been my experience that they step up when asked. When asked is the uh, is, is the uh, the big key. You've got to seek these people out. You know, they don't uh, they, they don't know who you are. Again, LinkedIn, fantastic tool. Twitter, a great tool. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and then you know, LinkedIn allows you to you know, put in any search criteria. So if you're, let's say, you know, targeting Expedia as uh, one of your prospective employers, you can easily go into LinkedIn, run a very simple search on Expedia software directors, or Expedia software managers, IT directors, whatever. Identify those people and reach out to them. Reach out to them via LinkedIn. I'm a current student at Cascadia. I'm, you know, I'm looking to break into the, in, into the industry. I see that you work you know, for a company I'm very interested in learning more about. Would you be open to talking to me for, for 10 minutes on the phone? They're gonna, you'll be surprised. They're going to say yes. The majority of them will get back to you. Maybe it might not be quickly, uh, you know, depending on when they, when they check LinkedIn, but they will get back to you. Take the time to talk with them. Take the time to have questions prepared beforehand, meaningful questions. Not, not, not about compensation and benefits and, and that stuff. It's not the right time. You're simply trying to learn more about that company. How do they do things? Why do they do them that way? And then ultimately, how, you know, how can you get in? Have that call. If the call goes, you know, goes well and you feel you, you, know, you hit it off and have had some good things to talk about, ask to me. Can I buy you a cup of coffee and, and, uh, you know, and build on this initial conversation for 20 minutes? Get in front of them, right? We talked about it at the beginning. Any by any means necessary, getting in front of the right people. You know, so it's simply an informational, an informational meeting. Can you sit down and, and just tell me some more about what you do? Can I ask you some questions? Can I connect with you via LinkedIn? You know, follow them on Twitter. Follow, find that same person and follow them on Twitter. I uh, I was not an early adopter of Twitter, but I uh, I've come around over the last probably six months. Um, you know, from a recruiting standpoint, it's been fantastic. You know, I've identified people that, that look great, you know, for, for a number of different reasons um, that may not, may not want to have anything to do with me right now. You know, they either they're not working or you know, they just have no interest in time. I've been able to you know, find those people on Twitter and follow them. Follow them, see, you know, see what they're thinking, what their challenges are. You know how uh, you know how they're going about things. And it'll give you a lot of information. I was uh, I was really I was very surprised at how much information is out there. And you know just the uh, the growth of Twitter right now is uh, is phenomenal. Um, so I'll, I'll pause for a minute. And see, I've kind of covered a lot there. Are there any questions? And I will definitely take some, some more time at the end. But uh, are, are there any questions about what we talked about before? 
speak a little bit about working with recruiter and what that piece like? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, are we talking specifically about a college recruiter or just kind of in general uh, anywhere? Well, well, some students work with college recruiters, but others are just working with technical recruiters. Okay, sure, absolutely. We have students who are both. Um, this is their you know first experience in college. And out of high school, but also yep. others who are retraining and great. Okay. You know, a college recruiter is always the kind of the right path. Sure, sure, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, just in, in very general terms, I encourage you to have, you know, have a have a couple of recruiters that you trust, uh, that you hit it off with, that you have a good, you know, you feel you've got a good professional relationship with. Um, you know, I would definitely, definitely encourage you to, to, to work with at least a couple. You know, and uh, Interview them. You know, there's a lot of recruiters out there that uh, you know that are gonna that are gonna call on you. That um, you know, at that point, you're their client. You know, you're you're somebody that they're trying to trying to recruit. So, uh, you know, I would definitely definitely encourage everybody to meet with any recruiter you work with. You know, if they're here locally, take the time to, to go in for 20 minutes, sit down with them face to face. There's you know, there's no there's absolutely no substitution for no substitute for an in-person face-to-face meeting. You can email back and forth, you can talk on the phone, but there's really no substitute for even just having 15 minutes to sit down across from somebody and, uh, and have, a you know, have a professional discussion. Um, before you engage, you know, ideally before you engage with a recruiter, you would have had your resume and references and all of that in order. Depending on your discipline, uh, we encourage you to have a portfolio. Uh, you know, if you're a, a web designer or a web developer or you know, a coder of some sort, have a portfolio. Have some sample codes. Have some sample uh, some sample work. Um, you know, if you're if you're more of a you know an analyst, documentation you know type uh, type person, have some sample you know some samples of your of your writing. You have some you know have project scope documents or you know, business analysis documents that you may have created. Have that stuff together to be able to present. Have your resume in order, have your reference, have your references you know, ready to go. Uh, so I'd say those are the you know, probably the, the primary things to, to, to keep in mind when you're you know when you're going to engage a recruiter. Uh, the second thing is make sure they understand what you're looking for. Uh, I think a lot of recruiters uh, you know, we get caught up all the time in trying to fill a job. You know, we, we've got a client that, uh, that you know needed a, needed a resource last week, or we're trying hard to find the right person. You got to make sure it's the right fit for you. And yeah, that's you know that's uh, oftentimes you get lost in you know get, get lost in translation. You know, on your side, you're hungry for a job. You want an opportunity to, to get your foot in the door. Make sure it's the right opportunity. You know, make sure that anybody you're working with. Can tell you what you're looking for. You know, you should be able to ask a recruiter, say, can you, can you, can you tell me what I'm looking for? You know, and have them be able to you know, have them be able to give you a compelling answer. If they're going to be out there representing you in the marketplace. You should trust them. You should respect them. And they should know what you're looking for. And any recruiter that you know that doesn't fit those, you know, hopefully you like them. Uh, you know, if they don't fit at least two to three of those criteria, they're probably not worth working. Or, or working with, let's say. Um, <clears throat> so I think I'd, I'd like to, unless are there any other questions as, uh, as far as maybe tools relate, uh, you know, like social you know, social networking uh, avenues, anything that I might touch on, because I'm going to kind of move on to it, maybe in a little different direction here. So if there's anything to touch on. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the last thing I'll mention on the social networking front, Use LinkedIn as your professional social networking media and keep your Facebook private. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> um, oh, yes. Uh, what's your position on getting your uh, Facebook passwords to your career? I was thinking about that question yesterday. I knew it was going to come up. Um, say it again, Mike. We can just it back here. Repeat that question. Oh, I was asking what his position is on the uh, the recent news about employers requesting or demanding that their employees provide them with their Facebook passwords. 
So I'll give you my personal uh, my personal stamp on this, and uh, I know it's an extremely hot topic in our industry right now. Um, my personal feelings are if it's inappropriate, not allowed to ask during the interview what your religion is, what your sexual orientation is, you know, some of these personal questions that we're, you know, by law, not allowed to ask during the interview, but it's absolutely unacceptable to ask, you know, to ask for access to your personal, you know, your personal networking, uh, you know, media. Again, that's just my personal, that's just my personal feeling. Um, me personally, I wouldn't want to work for a company that asked for that. Um, but I know there have been some pretty high profile companies that, uh, you know, that have. So, again, I think it's up for interpretation. I think, you know, within the next year, uh, I would be very surprised if there wasn't legislation handed down, uh, you know, uh, speaking to this topic very specifically. So, um, good question. Have, have any of you been out on interviews where that's been asked of you? Yeah, you know, I mean, want a job. <coughs> exactly. I mean, uh, my response might be, you know, I, I, I'm an active LinkedIn user. You know, that's my, uh, uh, you know, that's my social networking channel that I use professionally, and uh, I'd be more than happy to connect with you via LinkedIn. about LinkedIn, I know a few of my connections don't share their connections. Correct. What's your recommendation on that? Keep your connections private. Really? Yep. Um, I found that oftentimes the people that, and especially we're going to talk about kind of the networking, what we were talking about using LinkedIn to network, oftentimes, you know, <laughs> again, just because of the heavy use of LinkedIn, you know, by recruiters, um, I think there are going to be some people that are going to be reluctant to connect with you if they see that your connections are public. Because they know then that anybody can click on your connections and sort through who you're connected to. And you know, for maybe privacy reasons, you know, they don't want to be uh, you know, they don't want to be traced, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but um, so that's my that's that's my recommendation. But my understanding is you can't if you're connected to somebody and you see a connection that they have. You can't actually go directly to that person without going through that connection, uh, unless you've got a, a premium account where you can send them an email. Or you something. know, that's it. And I'm sorry, I, most all of us recruiters do have that premium okay. recruiter account, so we've so got you can connect with anybody else, and we've got yeah, we've got a little bit more visibility and uh, relationships, you know, internally. So uh, yeah, I think as far as just personal networking through LinkedIn, I think under the settings. Uh, top right corner, you know, your privacy settings or contact settings. Yeah. Uh, and I think if you set that to, uh, I think you can set it to just first level connection. So if you're connected directly with somebody that that person can view your profile or can view your connections, I think there's even an option to, to keep all of them private. Even and then I've turned that on and off before and I'm yep. just not sure which way to go. I would, I would default to keep them private. Uh, that's just, that's just kind of my, been my experience and, and some feedback that I've, that I've received uh, as well from, you know, from folks that are pretty heavy LinkedIn users that are operating at a pretty high level uh, as well. So does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm curious about one thing that touched base on what Mike said in the question earlier. Yes. About employers requesting your Facebook passwords. And I'm wondering with the recent legislation going through with CISPA and SOFA, if employers aren't because of the, the problem with data, so much data being taken and being used fraudulently, I'm just wondering if employers aren't asking that question to see if you're really put under stress, if you would actually give, be silly enough to give up that information. Have you, have you run into that being the case at all? You know, uh, I'm sorry, I, I haven't personally, uh, I haven't personally worked through a situation like this, you know, with any candidates that I've worked with. Uh, okay. Thankfully, all of the clients that we engage, uh, you know, aren't asking for that stuff. So, um, okay. I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer. For so, not a security. There's been no no issue raised around security. Then this is more of a, of a wanting to get to know the, the candidate too. Uh, yeah, you know, I think so. I mean, I, I don't think it can be argued that uh, you know that you can you can learn a lot about somebody by you know by 
check out their profile. You know, if it's open. So that's why I really encourage you know, to, to keep that private and uh, 